world to inanis tenebris. People fear many things. Fire, water, closed spaces, open spaces, but almost all people fear the dark. It's not because of the emptiness, but because you know there might be something within it. I've personally seen what lies in the dark. It's far more cruel and twisted than our straight and rather naive thinking. The place I'm talking about is Inanis Tenebris, or Dark Void. It's a literal dark void. Now, I have a leather-bound book that tells me about the different worlds there are. I opened it and watched as one page fluttered to life. Something cocooned me in a sphere of darkness, and then... I felt solid ground beneath me. Solid in that it was hard enough for me to not immediately fall into it, but... somewhat viscous. I tried to see, but it felt like my eyes were closed. I grasped around and found a tree-like support. I felt around it and found it to be unnaturally smooth and very slippery. I jumped back in surprise and slipped back on the slick surface that was the ground. I rubbed my fingers against my palm and found that the slickness is a liquid of a color I couldn't make out in the darkness. On my back, I felt the ground. It was like touching tar and oil at the same time, slick and sticky. I tried to stand up, to no avail. I slipped the more I tried to get up. Then I saw something darker than the darkness I was in. At first, I thought that my eyes were playing tricks with me, but then I saw the silhouette of a human. Or something human-like. I played dead, hoping it would leave. I closed my eyes and stopped my breath, hoping that the creature would leave. However, the creature stood above me and spoke in a strange tongue. But a second voice translated in my head. Welcome. You must have come here by the book. My apologies for startling you. We don't see anyone besides us here anymore. The creature picked me up and took me somewhere towards the east, stopping after a few minutes. Please close your eyes. It's safer that way. We wouldn't want our guest to burn their eyes out. I closed my eyes and felt rays of light prick against my skin. My eyelids covered my eyes from the light, but I could sense its intensity. The creature was right. I would have burned my eyes out. He then placed me under a shade and said, You may now open your eyes, but do so very slowly. I did as he said, and saw a whole different world. I was under a tree that was so enormous that to this day I can't accurately describe its size. In this world there were trees, flowers, animals, and everything that was there in our world, with one key difference. All the living things were pitch-black beings with horribly deformed faces. To give one example, the creature that got me here had a mouth that extended to his ears and was filled with pearly white shark-like teeth, while his eyes were blood-red with no pupils, the rest of the body pitch black. I was taken aback by the view, before being pulled out of my thoughts by the creature. Afraid, are you, traveller? We are the creatures of the dark. His voice was tinged with sadness and contempt. I am. Why is this world like this? It seems normal, but you guys, 
I spread my arms. His mouth upturned even more, and he let out a loud laugh. We are shadows of people from your world, all of your darkest thoughts, all of your most hurtful insecurities, all that's fearsome and deemed evil in your world. I'm your shadow, Ronald. I have to scare to stay alive. The worse you are, the better I become. It's our way to live. You'll be leaving in a while, but I'll be with you until you die. He turned away, but then paused. I never got to thank you for wiping out a world. Made me a lot stronger. He walked away and beckoned me to follow. As a harbinger, your destiny leads you to wipe out worlds besides the five. Heaven, hell, earth, limbo, and purgatory. I believe you know that much. I nodded. He walked towards the edge of the shade of the tree and pulled out a pair of sunglasses, tossing them to me. I quickly put them on, and my eyes felt better, much less strained. I saw the world in all its glory, as well as myself. My hands were covered by a thick, dark liquid, almost as black as the shadows themselves. As soon as the shade of the tree was behind me, the sunlight hit my skin, and the burning began. It felt as if a vat of boiling oil was dropped on top of me, searing all my nerves and melting my skin. My mouth was about to let out a scream, but my shadow clamped his hand over my mouth and whispered into my ear, Stay quiet, Ronald. I wish that you don't scream for your own good as well as mine. They will hear you, and believe me, they will kill you and me. I have no intention of dying until the day you are meant to die, which, mind you, is a long time from now. The liquid on my hands started to cool my palms and my forearms. It started to creep up my arms ever so slowly and was near my shoulders by the time a few hours had passed. I looked at him and whispered, Why is the black thing going up my arms? He looked at my arm and his eyes widened. Shit! Run! Let's get you to the end before it's too late. As we started to run, the shadows started to run behind us. They followed us for almost a kilometer, and just as soon as we got to a shaded region of the vast desert, they stopped in their tracks and looked at us dead in our eyes. We neared the center of the shade, where I saw a tall lever set into a perfectly cubic rock, set into the ground. But as we approached it, a hulking mass of flesh rose up in the dim and stalked towards us. It ran at my shadow and punched it square in the chest. My shadow looked surprised but unfazed, as if in no pain. A flare erupted in my chest where my shadow was just punched. I understood the situation I was in with uncanny certainty. My shadow endured the beast's onslaught, and if my shadow wins, the world ends. If not, then both me and my shadow die. I felt and took the damage my shadow suffered. I had to bear it in order to win. I remember my shadow telling me that I had to feed him faults, and that made him strong. I started remembering every flaw I had, every wrong thing I did, and all my fears. I felt that my shadow smirked, and I heard his voice in my head saying, Harbinger, well played. After several agonizing hours, the pain disappeared, and I felt a hand on my shoulder. I looked up and saw my shadow smiling. Well, we won. Nicely done there, giving me a lot of inspiration. Get up and go to the center. 
you'll know what to do. I stood up, and my shadow flashed me a double thumbs up. I ran to the lever and pulled at it. It was coated in the same slick substance that covered my arms and torso, and was slowly making its way to my toes. Grudgingly, it moved. I pulled it harder towards me, and as it clicked, the earth below me split. I fell inside, closing my eyes instinctively. I heard a lot of things falling with me, some much smaller than me, a few much larger. At some point I realized I could feel my own bed beneath me, and I opened my eyes. I was in my room. I got up and looked at my hand. Floating above it was an orb of swirling black mass. As I looked deeper within, I could see the power it could grant me, control over each person's shadow. And going into the shadow world as its ruler. I placed it against my chest and felt its searing energy course within me. As it numbed, I looked at my shadow and willed it to surface. It took the shape of my shadow from its own realm. He bowed to me and stayed down, saying, At your service, my liege. I tapped his shoulder. He looked up and smirked. Ronald, color me surprised. I assume your path is for power. Two orbs is two more than required. I smiled. Power? Or maybe I just wanted to piss off the guy up there. It's all the same to me. I assume you'll be helping me either way. He nods. Yeah, I need to get stronger. So keep doing what you're doing. With a wave, I sent him back to the shadow world. I looked to my book and saw another page was on the floor, burned to a crisp. A word of advice. You will never be alone from this point forward. Just hope you aren't scared. Fear is food in some worlds, and you wouldn't want to be dinner, would you?